Are there walls in your life that need to come down? In the city of Jericho, in Joshua chapter 6, there was a city that was walled up. It says in the first verse, no one came in and no one came out. It was a city that was shut up. You know, we're called a city set upon a hill. That's what the New Testament says. That we are cities. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if there is something in our life or that is around us in our environment that has closed us up, that has hindered the anointing, then we need to bring those walls down. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. You know, it could be a wall of depression, or anger, or bitterness, or obesity, unforgiveness, prejudice, sickness or disease, doctrines that divide us, that divide people, that divide church congregations, that divide denominations, addictions, and jealousy. And those are just a few that the Lord put in my heart uh, to bring out uh, in this message. All of those are walls that can come around a person, come into a person, and shut them up. So that there's nothing going in and nothing coming out. We don't want that. We want to be free in the Lord. And Jesus Christ has set us free. We want to bring down those walls. And so in the short period of time that I have to bring this message to you today, I want us to talk about there are three different ways of bringing those walls down. Now in Joshua chapter 6, God tells Joshua to go in, you know, at the, at the very first when Moses dies, he says, I'm going to be with Moses, I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. And he says, go in and possess the land. You know, the land flowed with milk and honey. And the land was a beautiful land in Canaan. But there were giants in the land. There were parasites in the land. There were those that would hinder the people of God from going forward. And so, here is a city. And God says, I want you to go in and I want you to capture that city. So, he sends in spies. Well, there was one woman, her name was Rahab. In the Bible, it's, she's called Rahab the harlot. She hid the spies. And she said, I will hide you on one. She was a, a, a very good negotiator. She says, I'll hide you on this condition. That when you come in to conquer this city, that you will not only save me and get me out, but you will save my whole household. Well, I could stay there for a while. And we'll see. And that's exactly what happened when they went in. She was rescued out. And her family was rescued out. And they were put in a safe place. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord specifically gave a strategic plan to Joshua. And I believe that he is giving us the same plan to bring down those walls that might be hindering us from going forward in the Lord and reaching our purpose and our destiny. And the first one is the Word of God. The written Word of God is powerful. And as we speak out the Word of God over any situation, it says that God will hasten to perform His Word. Now, as, as Joshua and his trained army uh, were marching around the city, and, and we know this story about the walls of Jericho falling down, hallelujah, and it says that the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of the army. Now, the Ark of the Covenant is the Word of God. It is the blood covenant now for us that Jesus has died on the cross and, and risen again. We have a blood covenant. And we can stand on those promises 
that he is our redeemer, our deliverer, the one who conquers all of our enemies. Can you say amen? I don't know. Some of you may be out there shouting already. You know, but in number two, so the first one is the word of God, speaking the word of God over your situation. The second one is letting the voice of the Lord speak to you, and that's the trumpet of God. He wants to speak to you today. He wants to speak to you through his word. He wants to speak to you through uh, the spirit of God. He wants to speak to you uh, from his prophetic voice uh, that's, that's rising in the land. The trumpets went out. The Ark of the Covenant went out. The trumpets went out. And they began to walk around the, the, the city and the, the walls of Jericho. The third thing is that we have to shout out the war cry. We have to be equipped to fight in this battle. And the shout, he said, and Joshua said, now don't shout until I tell you to shout. Don't uh, uh, cry out the war cry until I'm, I tell you. And, and so they marched uh, around six days. And then on the seventh day, uh, God said, it is time to shout the war cry, to claim victory. Hallelujah. You know, we used to go through our home and, and march, the victory march, and cry out the war cry over our daughter who they said was going to die at 14 months because she had no immunity system. And we walked in with her and we, we cried out to the Lord uh, with the war cry. You know, with the covenant of God says that he, by his stripes, we are healed. And we claim that. And we heard the voice of the Lord. And the voice of the Lord was encouraging to us and said, I am the healer of Amy Elizabeth. I am the one that heals her. And we heard his voice. And we began to cry out the war cry. You know, some people do not know, number one, that they have an enemy, and number two, they don't know how to fight the enemy. I'm telling you today how Joshua made those walls come down. It was with the Ark of the Covenant, the Word of God. It was, was the voice of God with the trumpet, and he shouted the war cry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, David, King David, knew that God was the one that was going to save him from his enemies. And I want you to listen to some of these psalms. Uh, these psalms come out of the King James Version. And it says that uh, this is the first one. And the first thing that came to me was the disease of lupus and sickle cell anemia. They both eat the flesh from within. Uh, oh, oh, Jesus. And in Psalms 27, 2, it says that, you're going to make uh, the, the enemies uh, that eat my, my flesh, you're going to make them fall. You're going to make them stumble and fall, oh God. And this is the word of God. This is the sword of the spirit. And then it says in, in Psalms 9.3, uh, your enemies shall fall at the presence of Almighty God. Who do you think was walking around that wall uh, with Joshua. It was the presence of Almighty God. You know, right before um, in chapter 5, the very last verse, the commander-in-chief comes to Joshua and he says, Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. The voice of God. Joshua heard it. In Psalms 1848, it says uh, that he has delivered me from my enemies he has delivered me from the violent man. Those of you that are in an abusive situation, whether it be male, female, children to parents, parents to children, let me tell you something. This psalm right here, Psalm 1848, is for you today. He has delivered you from any abuse. He has delivered you from any evil and anger and, and violent men and women. And then it says here, uh, Psalm 25, 2, I am going to trust in the Lord, and he is going to uh, let me triumph over my enemies. Do you see those walls come down? Do you see depression coming down? Do you see bitterness coming down? Do you see anger coming down? Obesity coming down? 
unforgiveness, prejudice, sickness and disease, uh, doctrines of men, addictions, and jealousy. Do you see those coming down? Joshua did, and you can too. God bless you today. Thank you for viewing. She